Hi, Tefeldude here, and welcome to part 6 of my introduction to the Elgato Stream Deck and all the wonderful things it can do. In this part, I'm going to show you how to open up two different PDFs in two different monitors. My teacher's book will be in my laptop, and my student book will be on the main monitor, which is what I teach from and I share with the students. Now, the first one is going to be opened up in Acrobat 11, which is an old PDF. The other one is going to be opened up in my default PDF, which is PDF Exchange. Also, as you notice about here, I'm going to open up uh, a folder where the audio would be. So that when I'm ready to teach, I just press one button and the books open and the folder opens and it takes about six seconds. So let's see how we do this. So the way we're going to do this, and remember you can download this PDF from the link below, is we're just going to use this multi-action button. We're going to open programs, put delays, put in hotkeys, add text, and add the Windows Mover. And we're going to follow this instructional path that I made before. So first we're going to open up my non-default PDF reader, Adobe Acrobat. Then we're going to open up the teacher's book. There's going to be delays, hotkeys, and finally we're going to open up the default PDF reader. And for that, we don't have to open the reader. We just open the book and it opens automatically. So let's start doing that now. Now, the first thing we have to do, we have to open up the multi-action button. And I'm going to put in a an icon of a folder that I made earlier. Remember the next lesson, I'm gonna show you how to make your own icons. Here, I'm gonna put in the folders icon that I made, and I'm gonna write the title. That's our title, and that looks quite nice over there. So, now we need to add the actions. And the first action, as lo loaded here, is open. And we have to open up the Adobe um, EXE file. Now, normally most of the files you want will be here, but there will be a time like, for instance, if I opened it up in DC, that's fine. I can click here and you can see there's an EXE file here that will open. However, because this is an old 86 version uh, Adobe uh, Excel, I have to go looking for it. So what you need to do is go back to, uh, this is the start menu program. So you have to go back here, back to the C drive and open up program 86. And here I have Adobe, Adobe 11, Acrobat, and then I find it here, Acrobat EXE. So that's my teacher's book folder. But now, I have to add these hotkeys. So I need a three second delay. I advise you to put the number three there so that you know it's a three second delay. Because uh, remember, you can always copy and paste these in. Next, we have to do Control O, which is a hotkey. Now make sure you click here to assign it. So that will open up a file where you need to type in the name of the book. You only need to do this if it's not a default program. How do I find that? Well, you simply have to look for the book that I wish to find. It's the teacher's book here. And what you have to do is right click it and go to copy as path. That will give you all the data you need. Copy as path. Now drag this text box here and right in the path and you can put tb here because it is the teacher's book let's just check control o there's no second delay there could be but it doesn't matter after it there should be a two second delay two second delay and then system return so i need a hotkey Click that, return. So now if you want to, you can just test that out. So if we go back here, click on our empty space. I'm gonna click here. Now I'm gonna press this button here, Monday lesson. 
see what happens. Okay, three seconds, control open, type text, two seconds, bingo. Now the teacher's book is open, but I do want it on the other monitor, so we'll do that later. We know it opens. So after this, let's go back here. We want to, uh, we're going to move it, but we're going to do, do the moving tool later, the, uh, the last thing. The next thing we want to do is open up the other book. So let's have a, a one second delay, I'll title it one. And then we're going to open up the student book. Now for that, remember I said the student book is a default. So all we have to do is find that default book, which is here, and do an open, system open, and just simply drag that book here. And as you can see, it will it will open that book. What else do I need to do after that? So I've opened the book, a stream deck delay of two seconds. Okay. Now I can either drag it in and do the two seconds again, but I've got one here. If I can control C, control V, paste the two second delay. There you go. Uh, then there's going to be, it's going to move it, but then I want to have a open the file where the audio is. Now to do that, you simply find the file. This is the audio, see here? I want to open that. Once again, I need to go open, drag that folder here, and that's ready to rock and roll. So let's try that out now. So I'm gonna close that folder. Now remember, this is my PDF exchange reader I'm using to show the example. So it's gonna open in here. The student book that is. So let's press the Monday lesson button. Teacher's book first. Student book, there it is. And audio, all done. But I do want the books to be in different places. Now in order to do this, two things we need to do. We can close off this. First of all, we need to add this Windows Mover um, kind of plugin. And you probably won't have it. So you have to click on this window here and up will pop this window. And you can see the plugins are here. And just type in Mover and there is the plugin. And you, I've installed it already. So once you've got that, now we have to think about where do we put the mover. Now, before you even do anything, once again, make sure the PDFs are where you want them to be, because the mover will ask you, uh, do you want to open where they are? And we do. So I'm going to move this onto the other monitor. And uh, you can see here, let's just have a look. So here is my dual monitors. So I'm going to move this over here. I want it to be exactly like that. And I want this to look like this here. I don't really care about the audiobook, but that needs to be there so I have room for zoom at the top. So uh, where they are is where I want them to be. I'll just move back to here so you can see me input the mover. So it has to go after the teacher's book to second, uh, return and then uh, one second delay, and then let's have the mover there. Now notice here, you have to find Acrobat. So there's Acrobat, it's right at the top. You can reload apps if it's not there. And say, get current window coordinates. Now they are minus seven. That means it's on the main monitor, which is my laptop. Also, I want them to resize. I want it to be exactly that size, which is 830 by 1550. That's that one done. Now I want a Windows mover. However, make sure you put a little second delay after each of these. So I'll put one second delay after that. Then it's going to open up the other PDF with a two second gap. And then let's put the Windows mover there. And for this one, we have to open, not Acrobat, but PDF Exchange Editor. There it is, PDF EXE. And we want to get the coordinates, 
which is minus 2000. That means it's on the big monitor. And I want to resize it. So it's going to be 900 by 1500. Perfect. And let's check it out. Now remember, um, let's give it another second delay after that, just so that the course book can open up a second later. Uh, put a one there. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is move these windows away from where I want them to be, just to show you that the Windows Mover does move them. Close them out. And now I'm going to share my dual monitor with you so you can see them both. And I'm going to press my Monday lesson. Teacher's book opens. And it moves to that screen. Student book opens. And it moves to that size. And then the audio opens, which I can move where I want or I can I can add a move tool for that as well. And that's all that's to it. So we've done everything that's necessary uh, according to the text we had before. So if I just open that file again. And so that's it. It's as simple as that. Remember, you can download this book at the link below. It has all of the methods that I've used in the other videos as well. And the next one, which is going to be creating icons yourself in paint.net. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, give it a like, and see you on the next video.